How's it going everybody? So today we're going to be talking about the Clearview 2.0 and all of its new features. So one of the main features and basically the only reason I bought it is this front screen. It shows you your current channel and your battery voltage. Now I used to have a screen on my old Clearview that would let me go through the menu and change all the settings and my frequency bands. But at the end of the day the only thing I ever checked was my battery voltage and my current channel. So if I can easily change my channel, I'm happy. Now another feature is that the AV port is actually Fat Shark standard now, so you don't need one of those crazy four prong cables that's converted inside because the pinouts are different on each end. Now you can just use any four conductor AV 3.5 millimeter cable. Another thing that's changed is that now you can change between fast and slow lock. So if you're like doing team racing and you have quick switches of cameras, you can easily set that in here to already know that it's not going to be able to lock that long so that you're not waiting for it to lock. Sometimes it can take up to five seconds. Now the menu inside of this is completely different from the old Clearview and we're going to go through that and I'm going to take you onto the goggles and we're going to go through it and everything is just a combination of scrolling and long presses. So, okay, so for instance you can um, change your channel by short pressing and then you can scroll up and down and when you get to the bottom of the channel it'll say change band and then if you short press you can then change your band. So then you just short press again and it'll select it and then it'll select your channel and then you're good to go. And then it'll take a few seconds but it'll lock based on the settings you have because you can have it do slow lock, fast lock and then there's also a Z value. So at the end of this video I'm going to go through an example of how quickly it switches whenever it's in slow mode and then in fast mode. Now there's another value that you can change called Clearview Response. Now, whenever I first started using this, I run a Foxier Predator, which had problems on rapid fire. And then on this, whenever it would lock, the video would start bouncing side to side, and I thought it was having a similar problem. But this has a Clearview Response value that you can change from negative two to positive two, based on whether your camera and VTX combo is over or under modulating. Now, for the Foxier Predator, all I did was set it to minus one, and I was good to go. Okay, so the rule of thumb from Clearview is that you want that value to be as high as possible that your video is still good and then it should work for most of your combinations of VTX and camera. So let's go into the menu and I'll walk you through all of the new settings. So here we are in the new Clearview menu and you can change your channel from here and band and then you can also pick whether you want it to be NTSC PAL or it'll auto detect the format of your camera. And then this is that Clearview response value I was talking about that helped me get my Foxier Predator working. And when you pick any setting inside this menu, it will automatically take you back to the video. And then all you gotta do is hold the button again to get back here. The Band Analyzer app searches through each channel and it'll show you the amount of signal strength on that channel. I'm currently on race three and it looks like my Wi-Fi is raging on R8. I won't be flying on that channel anytime around here. And then the next setting that you can see inside of the menu is the lost drone finder. And when you're inside of there, you just pick whether you want to use the left or right antenna. And it will use audio, like tones, to tell you whether you're going in the right direction based on signal strength. Now inside of this menu, you can change your bands, like which ones you have selected as your favorites. And it will show up on the front screen to pick through. One amazing thing is that there's already multi-GP presets inside of here and that's pretty convenient whenever you're going to like a big race you can pick one of those or you can create your own. One of my favorites to fly with four people is race band 1, 3, 6, and 8 because there's no intermodular distortion on those four channels and then the, it's really easy to pick those channels for people that, are tip, like, that typically fly on race band. So then within the OSD content menu you can like make your OSD that shows up whenever you have Clearview lock pretty information heavy or you can make it as light as you want by just holding on each of these and then it'll say showing or hidden and then the text that shows I have it set as Mondo but you can make it anything you select it and then you'll select each letter and you'll be scrolling through to change that letter and then flight target you can make it a box or a blip and that'll basically be like having a crosshair on your camera. And then within this menu is the menu where you can pick whether you want your CV unlock mode to be fast or slow. So first I'm gonna set it to slow and then we're gonna get out of this menu and then I'm gonna show you how quickly, or I guess how slowly, 
it changes between cameras. And I right now I have a setup with a squirt that has a camera on the front and back, and then one of the Blick multi-view duos that lets you pick either the front or back facing camera. So the amount of time that I'm used to is about like five seconds or three seconds whenever you have like an actual usable video to be able to take off and feel confident that you're not going to smash a gate because it does rolling like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to hold the button and then go into the change setup options and then features and options and then we can go and make it fast. And then I'll show you an example of how fast the changes between cameras. So I have my camera switcher set up on a momentary switch, so every time you see the view change, it's turning the one camera off and turning the next one off. So this is noticeably faster, but I still don't think this is fast enough for team racing because our pits are usually less than two seconds. But the Clearview development team says they're working on a way that you can just press the switch to lose lock. So then this next clip, I set two drones at my feet, one on race one and one on race eight, and then I just flew around to see how well the video would go. And there's a part of the track, this back tunnel, that is actually below the horizon, and I was very surprised to see that I saw no interference whenever I was flying. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and please comment below any questions you have about the Clearview. I just got it a few days ago, and I'm still learning and they're still actively working to get the firmware as strong as possible and I've submitted a few bugs already and they've responded immediately. So please subscribe if you like it and have a great day.